Welcome to St. John's Church. We are glad to have you in worship with us today. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, as we live among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson is a reading from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, beginning at the first verse. Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the rules that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you, that you may do them in the land to which you are going over, to possess it, that you may fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's son, by keeping all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life, and that your days may be long. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you, in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. A reading from Psalm 119. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous rules. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, asked Jesus, Which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus answered, The most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and there is no other besides him. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you all today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am ashamed to admit this, but I like to get recognition for the things I do. If I'm honest with myself, I want to get the credit when I do something great or something wonderful. I want people to know about it. If I do a good deed, I want the positive feedback and the praise that comes from people knowing about that good deed. Hard work. When we work hard, we get paid. Good things happen. We are used to this in the world that we live in. My dad, the coach, used to always say, the harder you work, the luckier you get. See, work leads to rewards. We do things and we get things for it. I have a friend who is an Anglican priest and he uh, always tells his congregation that Sundays are free. He says, what I do on Sunday, I do because I love it. I do because I'm a believer and I do because I'm a child of God. And he tells his congregation, what you actually pay me for is all of the other stuff that I do during the week. And while I do believe that there is much truth to this, uh, anytime he says it, I always personally get nervous because I actually only work on Sundays and I'm going to need to keep getting paid on that day. If I start just volunteering for Sundays, uh, I'm going to be in a bind. Seriously, though, it's the world we live in, isn't it? We go to work, we get paid, we exercise, we feel better. We are nice to other people, and miraculously, they are nice to us. There's this phenomenon that we all live in and out of day in and day out, and it's called cause and effect. It happens in the natural world. You chop down a tree and it falls over. It happens in our families. You say something ugly to your spouse or you are short with your kids, and the result is that there's tension and there's discomfort. It happens in our hearts as well, doesn't it? We allow our hearts to get fixated on things, some good and some bad, and then we can't get it out of our heart and out of our mind. There's this cause and effect. We're going to come back to this idea of cause and effect in a few minutes. In today's gospel lesson, we have Jesus answering a question of a scribe. Look at it with me, if you will. We're in Mark's gospel. And one of the scribes comes up and he hears them disputing, Jesus and those around him. They're disputing with one another. And this scribe comes up and he asks Jesus a question. He says, which commandment is the most important of all? See, different groups of religious leaders 
were taking different shots at Jesus. Some were trying to trick him. Some were trying to uh, get him in big trouble for the things that he said that would go against scripture and go against the teaching. They wanted to destroy him and his ministry. The Jewish religious establishment wanted to eliminate this troublemaker who called himself Jesus. So there's this whole series in all of the Gospels where these people are coming up and asking him questions that they believe he cannot answer. And this is one of the questions. Which commandment is the most important? It could be seen as one of these trick questions, but interestingly, in this gospel, in Mark's gospel, the leader asks it with a sincere heart, and that's different than in the other gospels. So he asks this question, which commandment is the most important? And now we have to remember that there are 10 commandments that were given to Moses at Mount Sinai, inscribed on the two stone tablets that the Jewish people kept in the Ark of the Covenant, But the scribe who asked this question would have not just been talking about those two, though he would have been talking about those two. He would have also been talking about the hundreds of laws that the Jewish people had accumulated over the years. And there was debate among their leaders, not Jesus and his, but even within the leaders within the Jewish religious establishment, there was debate about which one of these laws were more important and which of these laws were less important. The Pharisees had classified something crazy like over 600 laws, from ritual laws to ethical laws, from moral laws to ceremonial laws, about all these requirements and things that were just oppressing the people. But the Jewish people had to obey all these laws and requirements in order to stay in God's favor. They had to do all these things to be good Jewish people. So when Jesus answers the question in verse 29, look at it with me if you will, which is the most important. He says, And he is quoting from Deuteronomy 6, 4 and Deuteronomy 6, 5. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the Jewish people who heard this answer would have known what he was talking about and they would have known this piece of scripture. They called it the Shema. And it would be the opening part of the major creed of Judaism that devout Jews would have recited twice daily, both morning and evening. So they would have known this. Jesus goes on to say that the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. See, the teachers of the law could debate all they wanted about which of the laws were more important and which of the laws were less important. But Jesus, in his answer, brings them back to the basics. He brings them back to the root of what they were called to do and be as God's people. As you've heard me say before, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And Jesus brings them back to the basics. And he does this by giving new meaning to the words that they would have known all too well, From the Shema, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And what he goes on to tell them is that what mattered was not the laws and their relative importance or lack of importance to one another. What mattered was a relationship with that one true God. And what mattered was their relationships with those around them. So the question, which commandment is the most important, Jesus answers answers, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And then he goes on to say, love God and love your neighbor. He tells them to proclaim that the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And then he tells them to do these two things, love the Lord your God and love each other. And so this is where the rub is, right? This is where the problem comes for us. Because I think Jesus is speaking the truth and he is giving the summary of the law and it is what we are called to do as Christians and as believers. But I believe that there is a temptation 
to believe and to preach and to proclaim that we must do these things, love God fully and love our neighbor. There's the temptation to believe we must do these things to earn God's grace and favor, and that is a dangerous thing to believe. See, the problem is twofold if we fall into believing that we have to do these things in order to earn God's love. The first problem is we can't ever do it fully and completely because our sin keeps us from loving God with all of our heart, mind, and strength. And our sinfulness and selfishness, mine and yours, yes, yours, believe it or not, (laughs) keeps us from loving our neighbor as ourself. So that's the first problem. We can't do it completely. The second problem is we live in a world, as I said at the beginning of my sermon, where we have been taught and conditioned and raised to believe that we do the work and then we get paid. When we do the good deed, then we get the praise. We live in a world where our works do lead to rewards and praise and pay. And that's not necessarily a bad thing in the world we live in, but it's a dangerous thing if we think that's how our relationship with God has to work. It's a very dangerous thing when we are tempted to believe that we have to do all of the good works fully, perfectly, and completely, loving God and loving our neighbor in order to earn God's grace and favor. Some years ago, uh, I was walking out after a funeral service and I ran into an elderly parishioner who was friends with the person who had died. And this person said to me of the parishioner who died, I'm sure he's in heaven. He came to church regularly and he was a really good person. And that's how you get in, isn't it? It broke my heart because we've been preaching something different for years and years and years. We don't get in because we do the good works. Friends, the problem is that there is a huge danger of getting the cause and the effect backwards. We believe that our good works for the Lord and for each other are the cause and that God's love for us and acceptance of us, his favor towards us, and even Jesus' forgiveness of our sins are the effect. We believe, and many churches and preachers even teach, that our works, our faithfulness, our ability to do that which God requires causes God's love for us. When in fact, friends, just the opposite is true. God's love for us, God's favor towards us, and Jesus' forgiveness of us is the cause The Lord is the moving force, not us. The Holy Spirit moves in our hearts, and it moves our hearts to faith, and the Holy Spirit moves us to believe. This is the cause. God is the cause. And then the good works of loving our neighbor and of loving God, of caring for those around us, the good works flow forth out of that. Jesus' love fills our hearts. Jesus' love fills our lives. And we are moved to love the Lord. And we are moved to actively love those around us. The good work is the effect. And it's critical that we keep that straight. God's love for us is the cause. The good works that flow out of us as God's people are the effect. Friends, Jesus brings us back to the basics. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. It's not about keeping a checklist of laws and requirements. It's not about doing a good work to get a reward from God. It's about love. It's primarily about God's love for us. This is the cause. And then after that cause, It is about our love for him and our love for those around us. This is the effect. Brothers and sisters, we have to keep the cause and effect in their proper place. God's love is the cause. Scripture teaches us in 1 John, And love consists not in this, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son, 
as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Brothers and sisters, Jesus came into the world and died on the cross, not because we can fulfill the requirements of the law, but because we can't. He calls us through his love, through his grace, to be his people. He loves us more than we can imagine. God's love is the cause. When it fills us, we are moved to love him back, and we're moved to love those around us. Cause and effect matters. God's love is, has been, and always will be the cause. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the The Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Almighty and ever-living God, we are taught by your holy word to offer prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We humbly ask you mercifully to receive our prayers. Inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all who confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that you will lead the nations of the world in the way of righteousness and so guide and direct their leaders, especially President Biden, Governor McMaster, and Mayor Myers Irvin that your people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant that our leaders may impartially administer justice, uphold integrity and truth, restrain wickedness and vice, and protect true religion and virtue. And we commend to thy gracious care in keeping all those who serve the common good, especially our military, those in law enforcement, first responders, health care workers, and all those who go into harm's way to protect us, to defend us, and to rescue us from danger. And we pray especially for Joel Billings, Hartwell Bryant, T.J. Carpenter, Jonathan Carroll, Alan Kopp, Caleb Fleck, Chloe Fleck, Colin Fleck, Matt Harvey, Brandon Johnson, Daniel Lamb, Andrew McCarria, Peter McCann, Paul Miller, John, Tom Miller, Mike Shaw, Michael Sims, John Taft, Ben Thornton, Stephen Turner, Ricky Tyner, and Peter Warren. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prosper, we pray, all those who proclaim the gospel of your kingdom throughout the world. 
Give grace, Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to your servants, Archbishop Foley Beach and Bishop Mark Lawrence, that by their life and teaching they may proclaim your true and life-giving word and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. And to all your people give your heavenly grace, especially to this congregation, that with reverent and obedient hearts we may hear and receive your holy word and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We ask you in your goodness, O Lord, to comfort and sustain all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially Jack Cochran, Harry Greenleaf, Kelly McAllister, Billy McCreary, Joshua Neas, Shot Paget, Katie Rogers, Matt Wolfert, and Martha Willis. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Hear our prayer. We remember before you all your servants who have departed this life in your faith and fear, especially Lee Gary, Natalie Bettis Howard, sister of Maitland Chase, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we ask you to give us grace to follow the good examples of St. John and all your saints, that we may share with them in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, friends, let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in His great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to Him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to Him. Come unto me, all who travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the perfect offering and propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you, and, and also with you. God's peace. God's, God's peace. peace. God's peace, and again, welcome. We are delighted to have you joining us today for online worship. <clears throat> we have a handful of announcements uh, for today. Um, we are excited to announce that we are uh, embarking on our stewardship campaign uh, for next year, for 2022. Uh, we uh, mailed out uh, stewardship cards and pledge cards this week. You should be receiving those in the mail. Uh, if you have not gotten one, and uh, would like to make a pledge to the ministry here at St. John's, please uh, let us know and we'll make sure uh, to get you one either through the mail or you can come by the office and pick one up. 
They'll also be available uh, at various places around our campus if you're joining us uh, for worship or Bible study or any of our other uh, fellowship activities that we have going on. But we do want to encourage you to prayerfully consider your pledge. Uh, something like 95% of our annual budget comes straight from pledges from our members and uh, our stewardship uh, group, our vestry and our finance committee uh, make our budget decisions based on those pledge cards uh, for the coming year. So just encourage you to pray about that and please uh, return those pledge cards as soon as you are able. Um, two upcoming events that we're very, very excited about. On Sunday, November the 14th, we will have our bishop with us, uh, the Right Reverend Mark Lawrence. Uh, it is a bittersweet uh, day for us because this will be his last official visitation as our diocesan bishop, um, but he will still be around the diocese, and I'm sure we'll see him from time to time, but this will be his last official visitation. So put that date on your calendar, Sunday, November 14th. Uh, he'll be here for our 9 o'clock service and for confirmation at our 11 o'clock service uh, with uh, a reception following the 11 o'clock service, and also he'll be dedicating our new playground uh, in between those services uh, at 10 o'clock. So it's going to be a great Sunday morning at St. John's, and, and we really want to encourage everyone to come out and be with us uh, in person. Outdoor worship at 9, uh, the playground dedication, and some time with the bishop at 10, 11 o'clock confirmation here in the sanctuary, and then a reception to honor our confirmands and to honor our bishop uh, immediately following that 11 o'clock service. We also have coming up our second parish night on November the 17th. That is a Wednesday. Uh, for those of you who came last time, uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful thing. We hope to have even more folks join us. This time uh, we'll begin at 5.15 uh, with supper and, uh, and, and begin our, our program and our teaching time at 6 o'clock. And we promise to have everybody home early uh, in time for bed. Pre please bring your whole family. We have something uh, during our teaching time for all ages. Uh, it should be a great night uh, for parish night on Wednesday, November the 17th. Lots of folks celebrating birthdays and anniversaries uh, this week. Happy birthday to Dick Bryant and to Nikki Nasso, to Emily Coward and Craig McKenzie, to Bobby Gary, Kelly Lyles, Gray Rains, Carl Shees. Happy birthday to Elizabeth Dargan Passant, and to Teresa Brewer. Also, happy birthday this week to Alan Anderson and to Jack Jordan. If you see any of those folks out and about this week, please wish them a happy birthday. We also want to wish a happy anniversary this coming week to Corrine and Bill Dalrymple. Again, delighted to have you joining us uh, for online worship, but please uh, come out and see some of the things that we have going on in person with our Bible studies, our parish night, some fellowship events that are coming up, and our Sunday morning worship. We'd love to, to see you. Uh, we understand and want you to be comfortable, but we miss seeing those of you who haven't come back to join us yet. Again, thanks for joining us today. Our service will conclude with our closing prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. Amen. Please join us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art Lord in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, thy be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Most merciful Father, we give you great thanks for the Anglican Diocese of South Carolina. We celebrate the election of the very Reverend Chip Edgar to be our bishop coadjutor. 
We trust that he will be to us a faithful shepherd and a humble servant of your gospel. We pray that you will fill him with your Holy Spirit, surround his family with your peace, and strengthen them for the work to which they have been called. Please join us in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all all mercies, we, your your unworthy servants, servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.